Hello everyone and welcome back to Orms TV. My name is Jess and this is the video I told you guys I was gonna make back in April. It's a little late, but we got there eventually. About a month ago, I made a video talking about all the camera gear that we use to shoot our Orms TV videos. And in that video, I promised I would do a follow-up installment talking about all of our post-production equipment. This is that video. As per our previous video, I would like to repeat what is fast becoming my standard disclaimer for these types of videos. This is just the gear that works for us. It might not work for you. I am not claiming that this is the best or even the only way to produce videos. This is just where we are as budding content creators on YouTube. And I'm only sharing this with you guys because you asked me to. So obviously after we have shot our videos, we need some way of getting the footage from the camera onto my computer and that is where this Lexar multi card reader comes in handy. It's great because obviously I work with SD cards on an almost daily basis but also for recording the podcast and sometimes when we've gone out and shot some photos on a different camera then I need to work with micro SD cards and CFast cards and this multi card reader supports both of those. This multi card reader has been around a lot longer than I have on Orms TV and it shows no signs of giving up the ghost just yet. I'm not really sure what else to say about this. It's an SD card reader, not a spaceship. Mm. Now this next piece of equipment plays a vital role in our production process as well as our post-production workflow. And those are my Sony MDR7506 over-ear closed back headphones. These have been the industry standard for sound in video production for many years and they still hold up today. They are really compact and lightweight. They can fold down super small, which is great because you can just chuck them in a bag along with your other equipment. They are made entirely out of plastic, which obviously contributes to the light weight, but it does mean that they aren't particularly pretty to look at. Personally, this has never bothered me. They're there to perform a function, not to look cool. Personally, I found them to be extremely comfortable, although I should make a note that I do have a rather small head and really tiny ears. And I know a lot of other filmmakers with larger heads and larger ears who have complained that the padding on the ear pieces could be a little plusher. However, this is not something that's affected me personally and I have worn them for up to 11 hours straight without experiencing any significant amount of discomfort. The cable is really long, almost 10 feet long in fact, and it's heavy and very durable. The length of the cable might be irritating for some people, but I found that when I'm out on a shoot tethered to a camera or chained to my desk doing an edit, it's nice to have a little bit of extra length to play with. They can connect to any device that has a 3.5 millimeter jack, but they also come with a quarter inch adapter. It should be noted that these are not intended for listening to music, they are for producing, and therefore that means that the bassy end of the frequencies is not gonna be as powerful as a lot of other consumer headphones. However, because it is super sensitive to your mid and high frequencies, it's gonna make any issues with your audio recording apparent immediately, and that's exactly what you want when you're monitoring audio or mixing in post. Overall, the amount of sound quality that you get with these headphones for the price is completely bonkers. They cost less than 2,000 Rand and compared to a lot of other headphones out there in the industry, that's really affordable. This, of course, is the part of the video that you all came here for. You want to hear about my custom-built editing PC. In line with that, I may have a small confession to make. I am a proud nerd. However, as it turns out, custom built editing PCs are not one of the things I get particularly nerdy about. I know the basic sort of specs I should be looking at when I'm assessing whether a computer will be able to meet my post-production needs. But that is where it ends for me. I can't tell you more than that. And to be honest, right now, it isn't necessary for me to know anything more than that in order to do my job successfully. What I can tell you about this PC is that nine times out of 10, it can keep up with my brain. And that is all that I ask for. I don't particularly care whether I'm working on PC or Mac or what the specs are or who manufactures the components. All that I want is a device that empowers me to exercise my creativity instead of hampering me. But for those of you who are interested in the specs, 
here you go. My PC is powered by an Intel Core i7-8700K overclocked 4.8 gigahertz processor. It runs an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1080 overclocked graphics card with eight gigabytes of GDDR5X memory. For RAM, we're working with 32 gigabytes of DDR4 266 megahertz high-performance gaming RAM. My primary drive is a 480 gigabyte SSD. I try to keep only my applications on this drive so it doesn't get cluttered. Then for my secondary drive, I have a one terabyte hard drive. I store all my current projects and recently completed ones on this drive. Everything older than a few weeks gets put on a server. My PC is liquid cooled, which just sounds cool to say, if I'm honest. It's housed in a tempered glass case with RGB fans. I can't tell you if this serves any real purpose, but it looks real pretty. And then for my monitor, I have a Dell SE2717H 27-inch screen. It's not the biggest or the best monitor, but the size is generally fine for me. While we're on the topic of computers and storage, it might be worth me mentioning the two hard drives that I use. The first one is a WD My Passport 4TB portable hard drive. This drive is not super fast, but because it's so big, I just use it to store all my original media from my old personal shoots that I sometimes use for B-roll in Orms TV videos. And then my second one is a Lacy Rugged 1TB mini external hard drive. This is your quintessential content creator hard drive. Everyone recognizes that bright orange sleeve. For a hard drive, this drive is really fast. If you're using USB 3, you can transfer a 700 megabyte video file in less than seven seconds. So I use this drive for storing media that I'm probably gonna need to access multiple times a week. Let's chat a little bit about the editing software that I use. When I was starting out, I used to edit in Final Cut Pro 10. Then back in 2018, when I was studying cinematography for content creation, I started learning to edit in Premiere. About midway through 2018, I was introduced to DaVinci Resolve when we started moving on to our color grading modules. And I began to get really comfortable in that application. I just really liked the whole interface and Blackmagic's whole philosophy for how they've constructed the workflow in that application. The fact that the free version of Resolve contained so many of the same functions as the paid version was a real draw card for me. I didn't want to be paying a monthly fee for an expensive program like Premiere, and I wasn't really enjoying Final Cut Pro 10 enough to stick with it. By the end of 2018, I was editing exclusively in the free version of DaVinci Resolve. And then when I started working for Orms in January of 2019, we moved over to the studio version. To be honest, it just sold me on this NLE even more with its insane open effects and crazy noise reduction capabilities. I am gonna do a full-on video about DaVinci Resolve in the near future, so I'm not gonna go all out in this one. However, what I will say is that this program is the actual bomb. It is so reliable, so functional, so intuitive. I love literally everything about DaVinci Resolve. It is the program that I teach my students to cut and color in, and it is the one that I recommend to anyone who is starting out as a video creator. If you would like to see a video about why I prefer DaVinci Resolve to Final Cut Pro 10 or Premiere, then hit that like button to let me know, and I'll get right on that. My obsession with Blackmagic's products does not end with Resolve. Since 2019, I have been the proud owner of a Blackmagic micro panel that I use for all my color grading. If the Canon C200 is my baby, then this is her little sister. Again, this panel deserves an entire video to herself, but this is what I will tell you about her right now. This Blackmagic panel is built like a tank. I know that if I look after it, it's gonna last me the rest of my life. It makes color grading so much faster and so much easier. The first time I used it for a grade for a client, it cut three hours off my job time. Can I just say, the cool factor is off the charts with this product. It honestly looks like the control panel of a spacecraft, and when I use it, it kind of makes me feel like I'm captain of the USS Enterprise. Hey. 
I warned you, I'm a proud nerd and I love Star Trek. Thank you so much for spending some of your valuable time watching this video, guys. I just wanted to say that we have had such positive engagement on our recent videos and I appreciate all of your wonderful comments. Please leave some more of them on this video. If you would like to get notified when my video about Da Vinci Resolve and my color grading panel comes out, please hit that subscribe button and tap that notification bell so you get notified. We just hit 10,000 subscribers on Monday and honestly, it was so exciting. Let's keep this community growing as 2020 progresses. Anyway, that is it for this video. Until next time, cheers.